Hoy nuestra cita es con Shrin Nejad, artista iraní destacada por su abordaje del Medio Oriente, recientemente homenajeada por el Foro Económico Mundial y nombrada por el Financial Times como una de las mujeres más influyentes del año 2011. Te veo después de la apertura para encontrarnos con la artista. ¿Te suscribiste a Cosmo Arte TV? Vení conmigo. It's such a pleasure to have you with us and I wanted to start asking you about you as an artist. Um, there are many elements that constitute your personal and professional identity. Woman, Iranian artist living in exile. So I would like um, to see if we can walk through those, we can say, four elements yes. and what they mean to you and how they have shaped your work. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. Um, that uh, basically, I'm an Iranian-born um, artist that had had to live outside of her country uh, actually longer than I've lived in my own country because of the revolution, Islamic revolution. And I think that um, my life has pretty much been defined by political turmoils and um, situations that have separated me from my family and my uh, country. And this has become a, a central in my work in terms of an obsession in questioning issues of um, exile, uh, politics in the way that they define innocent people's lives. Um, and so everything I do, whether it's a photograph or a video or a movie, it's about this intersection of an individual with the world, um, art and politics. Uh, poetry and violence and, um, and and I seem to frame a lot of questions uh, that have directly affected my life uh, so uh, unlike many other artists who choose to be political because they're interested in politics for me I'm political because I don't find that distance from political reality having been born as an Iranian how uh, now here that we are in the Rosenberg Foundation and uh, its mission was to show how the world can change the, how the art can change the world. Uh, I wanted to ask you that is very related, uh, how your art is changing the world. Well, I mean, first of all, as an artist, I've always managed to think outside of the box, uh, outside of the, just the boundary of the arts and the art community, the market, and because my subjects are so much about the people, the mass, uh, particularly the people who, who have suffered a great deal by the people of power. So I would find it rather hypocritical that I would only approach that from a distance and never get in the middle of it. And since I cannot return to Iran, um, I found this an amazing opportunity now to go to Egypt, which very similar to the Iranian history had a setback by a revolution that was very popular but had a very violent um, ending. And um, the uh, Rauschenberg Foundation had this wonderful project initiative to invite an artist to create a project that has a humanitarian cause. And I just thought that was a great opportunity to take myself to Cairo and, and to share their experiences of tragedies um, in terms of their personal loss and national loss. So this is how it developed. I think this work is the closest I have come to making documentary work because my work is usually very fictional, very stylized. People uh, that pose for me, they are playing a role. So for the first time, I, I had to go and, and really seek out people who were themselves, who in front of the camera to try to convey pure emotion uh, of what it's like to live under tremendous pain, whether that's economic or, or poli politics or, um, uh, you know, personal tragedies that they've experienced. And what about, uh, about the, medium, the medium you choose? because lately you have been uh, working more uh, with, with cinema movies, yeah. and 
uh, film and now it's kind of a go back to the photography. So why, why the still image? Why was your choice? Or it's a very good question. You know, I have um, a love affair with photography, video and film, cinema. With photography, it's always about human portraits, um, which is something that I think it's very particular for me because, first of all, um, because of the work that I do on, on the photograph, calligraphy is a, it's a very solitary experience, it's using my hand. And it's also that there's so much power in human expression that I just love to capture in a single photograph. But I think with the film and video, it's about storytelling. You know, it's the idea of, you know, as you can see here, there's no background. It's very, you know, controlled, almost very sculptural. Uh, seeing the images that are so powerful, what else there is there to say? And I would like to see, because it's a constant in your work, the relationship between the portrait and the calligraphy, the yes. poetry hidden on it. Well, first of all, this, uh, images of the feet were inspired by, I don't know if you recall, there, there was recently in, in the late fall where the military of Egypt attacked the Muslim Brotherhood sitting and at some point many, many, many people died and there were all these images of rows of dead men with their feet and then little tags with their identity. And, and that was so disturbing to me because it was like these people came into life and left and that's all is remained. Uh, and, and I just uh, was really struck by that image. Um, and I thought in the context of this show, I should do that. And more so, the bottom of the dirty feet of someone who's in Islamic culture, um, the bottom of the feet is the absolute, the most taboo uh, uh, part of the body to be exposed. And I have often um, gone back to the hand, the feet, and the face. Um, so, in creating this work, I, I thought it would be very interesting now. The, the image is very morbid, but the poetry is by an uh, Iranian poet that I love so much, um, and it's called A Cry. And it, it talks about, um, it's a really a, a description of a revolution, uh, an image of how his house is burning and how he's running from door to door with a bloody shirt. I mean, the translation is actually here. And so I thought if you have this image that really signifies something that of a political reality, the addition of the poem, it just neutralizes the political dimension and humanizes it, you know, in a way. Um, and, and, and also makes it more beautiful. More existential. More right? existential, as opposed to just making images that is more like documentary, like photojournalism, you know. And, and so then I made this fictional identity. The name of the, the number of the birth certificate, the place of birth, name of mother, name of father, uh, you know, a place of, you know, these the kind of details that usually go inside of anyone's uh, certificate, the birth certificate. But here is all poetry. And like I see, you know, I, I always like the idea of adding decorative motifs next to these really um, tough words that have real content. But then, you know, this is the Persian in me where, you know, you're born to a culture that everything around you is always has these decorative Arlene. motifs, even the Quran. Like this, this whole exhibition is a tribute to the, to the innocent losses of life, really. But, but it, it is about Egypt, but it transcends just that, is that all of us, any of our countries that have suffered politically in the way that violence has been a big player, uh, we all have seen that. I particularly went after older people who have lived a very long life and have seen this passage of time, have seen pain more than once, and, and I, I just loved the wrinkles on their faces. So graphically, if that, that was became like a canvas for me to do this big, bold writings, I just felt I didn't want to do anything bold to distract from the expression because, like you said, these faces are so powerful. I didn't want to do anything that would diminish the strength of the image. Uh, um, so instead, these are like millions of words that are written in different grays and colors of black and things to just enhance and, and, and 
the, the image. And um, so to me, these two graphics in a way complement each other, but it's, um, this is also poetry. And what about the eyes of the people? This guy is also one of my, um, you know, my, one of my uh, favorite. Uh, and every time I see his eyes, uh, I'm very moved by him because I think he is so sincere, you know. I was very lucky that they, they were just able to do that. And they're to average people. To you. Yeah, and they're, he was a mechanic. And, um, you know, these were like the grandmothers of some people that we were. Uh, he was um, not very well, as you can see, he's very thin. Um, he was also a mechanic next door. Um, so, and, and he was the janitor of the building, the one on the, the, These are people who, you know, on street level were like, yes. you know, some of them like this one, you know, she barely had a shoe, you know. And, um, and it, it, they were really that poor. And, and yet, look at their faces, it's such a dignified individual. Exactly. You know? For me, it's the first time that I have allowed this much emotion to be exposed. Usually I'm much more into controlled emotion, not, exp you know, more, in more introverted. I did this whole other series of photographs called The Book of Kings. Um, the Book of Kings was also about Arab Spring, but it was a little bit inspired by the book of kings that was made in 10th century is a book of poetry, is an epic poetry by Ferdowsi. Uh, and that book is all about this mythological tales of uh, uh, heroes and, and pe patriotic po poetry, of stories of people who are, who are dying or letting themselves uh, lose their lives for their country, for their nation. Uh, but there's always uh, this courage always intersecting with violence and killing and brutality. So I made a number of like, I think 85 photographs that was all about the Book of Kings from 10th century which depicted Iranian history in one way, in a mythological way, and today's history where we had the Green Movement and Arab Spring, where again this notion of patriotism, it's so high in the, in the country, but it's always treated with extreme amounts of violence and uh, atrocity by the government. And, and so as you can see, there is a war and killing going on. And so every one of these, and the reason I used color was um, actually a little bit because I wanted to use the color of blood and, and this idea of the hand over the heart is uh, the Legion of Honor. Yes. It's a symbolic, it's a universal symbol for love of your nation. So I thought in just a position with all of these images, uh, it was touching to have different type of photographs. Yes. So we know what the context is. Exactly. It's all about country, love, courage, the desire for democracy, change, yet violence, death, and yeah. also maybe how um, a national experience turns into a personal experience. Exactly. Itself. The loss, which is very personal. Yeah. I hope what people can take away from this show is to be moved, um, to be emotionally moved and to see that the, the good and evil, the pain and, and happiness, they're all coexisting. And in these pieces, they're like very beautiful, but they're very, very painful. Um, so I think there's that paradoxical notion about what is the essence of every one of our lives. There's always the, the good and bad, but there are some people who experience it in a bigger degree than in a bigger measure. But I think in this show, as you can see, these are work that are aesthetically paid attention to their endless hours in making them. So they're, uh, they're, they, they really have the confidence of important work, but yet there's content and there's, is trying very hard to touch the audience if they can open themselves up. And, and, and to insist that art can truly go deeper into a conversation than just being a commodity that hangs on a wall. It could hang on a wall, but I, I just feel that 
um, I, I, I will never want to be comfortable with this idea of the fact that I am so safe and privileged and others are not and that's okay. And so my, my uh, consciousness is that I want to make work that A, emotionally moves people, but second, it could be a conduit between the people and my subjects, you know. Uh, whether I succeed or not, but at least as an artist, that is my aim. That's beautiful. Y así terminamos esta maravillosa entrevista. Te espero el próximo jueves para nuestra cita con el arte. Y si todavía no lo hiciste, suscríbete a Cosmo Arte TV. Chau, chau.